Everybody, welcome back. I'm Yumble, and I've spent the day messing with visual settings and mods in City Skylines, and this is the result. So hopefully that looks that looks pretty good. It's uh, it's for something I'm cooking up. But that's not what I'm here to talk to you about today. Today I would like to discuss something known as the single point partial clover leaf. This is a interchange. It's a service interchange that I think is underrepresented in City Skylines today, and I'd like to tell you all about it. So single point partial clover leaf, right? It's a mixture of a single point urban interchange, service interchange for getting cars off the highway, and a partial clover leaf. This one, uh, the single point urban interchange, takes all of the lefts and converges them into one point and it can move traffic in three light cycles. It only takes three light cycles to move traffic on and off the highway and that's really great with free flowing ends. The partial clover leaf turns your left hand turn into a right hand turn by using the loops of a clover leaf on one or more sides. So that reduces conflicts at the intersections. There's still two intersections which need lights. They need a, a junction of lights to run and they can move traffic in two light cycles, I believe. It takes two cycles to fully clear traffic on this interchange. But what if we took them both and used the best of both of them to make something that's equally as free flowing on the ends and reduces the number of cycles to the same as, as that of a partial clover leaf? This is the single point partial clover leaf. So you've still got the loops from the clover from the park low. You've still got the loops that go around on on one or more sides. But there's also this converging point in the, in the middle, like a single point urban interchange, and that's where the magic happens. Two light cycles is all it takes to move all of the traffic through this interchange, and it also has free flowing ends, just like the single point urban interchange. No conflict whatsoever. Traffic in, traffic out. I want to show you how I build this today, and uh, we'll see if you like it. For this build, I'm going to be using the North American Freeway Pack from Greyflame, but you can use whatever highway suits you. If you want to use vanilla highways, that's totally fine. It's really whatever you want. But this map largely has these two-lane highways going throughout it, so I'll probably keep to that and use the two-lane highway here. And I also want to add... Do, do, do. Uh, these are four units apart, by the way, which is standard kind of standard highway spacing in City Skyline. The unspoken uh, City Skylines. The unspoken rule, most assets will use a four unit spacing. So all the ones that I upload to the Steam, uh, Steam Workshop use that, but also the vanilla ones too. So all vanilla assets seem to have this four unit spacing, no matter what type of road is used. Um, so that's what I'm gonna do today. But a pretty typical start here would be two lanes in the middle and then maybe one lane road going along the outside. So those are four units apart. This is going to be two units away. And I'm just going to extend this all the way to the end because I don't know where the ends are yet. We're going to discover this as, as we go over time. That looks pretty good. Uh, assuming I've done this correctly, these should say two units each. Do we get two units here? Yep, two units, 16 meters. All good. I'm going to go to our four-lane road. This is going to be our arterial road for this operation here. And today I'm choosing to go 10 units high. All that really matters is that the distance between this road and the upper road and the overpass can clear traffic underneath. So pick your tallest truck and maybe measure it up and see if, see if it makes a difference. See if the vehicles can fit under it. But the way that this works out is it happens to be 12 units wide, which is exactly where we want to be. So we should have a point dead center so this should be six units away, 48 meters, six units, 48 meters. Excellent. I am going to turn on Anarchy in a second here, because we're going to need it. Uh, I'm actually going to switch to a two-lane highway road right now. You can just use regular vanilla road for this. But I'm going to make our single point in the center. That, that road there was just to make a node, just to break this and establish the middle, because that's what we're really going to be working off of today. Now, two-lane road very close to this. I want to get very close to this. I want to get right next to the, uh, right next to this underpass here, or right, right next to this ramp. So I'm making a one unit. <laughs> the way I'm getting this one unit thing is by turning off node snapping and turning on anarchy. I'll fix the thing later. I'll fix the pillar later. But now your best friend is going to be freeform road tool. So using this two lane road, we're going to go over freeform road tool 
and click our center point. Nice. It's going to look a little weird until I really get this together, but that's, that's the beginning. That's the starting point. Now, because I've moved this over one node, our circle is going to... It, I'll, I'll show you. Our circle is going to depend heavily on this value here. Today, I'm going to do a 6x6 six six loop. So we're going to do 6 units. When I say a 6 unit, I mean 6 units up and 6 units over. If you've seen any of my videos about roundabouts or interchanges, you've already seen this trick. So because we've used one little, um, one little spot there, or actually the reality is we are 2 units away, and I know I want the loop to end here, so we should probably go over four units instead of six. The math will work out, I promise you. The math will work out. So that puts us six units away from that destination road. Now let's get crazy. Six units. And I'm going to go down to ground. We'll figure out the heights later. I'm not that worried about it for now. Six units up, six units over. Six units over, and we're going to connect at our end point here. This one will actually use highway ramp, I think. You don't have to build it this perfect either. I'm really, I'm really kind of going, going crazy with this, but... Do, do, do. Six plus six. Right there. Bingo. That is backwards, but you get the idea. On this side... A lot like the partial clover leaf that I like to build. We're gonna do uh, kind of a kind of a spot here, <laughs> kind of the same shape but different. Six units up, six units over. Get rid of that middle section because it's not really necessary. Perfect. So that is one side of our partial clover leaf. Now let's see if we can't. Do, 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 do. Let's build our other loop that I know is gonna end up going here. That's probably just going to be highway ramp, so I'm going to build under that pretense. But feel free to upgrade the roads or downgrade the roads however you want, depending on your, your traffic needs. So that's another 6x6. Six six. Nice. And that is one quarter of the whole thing. Now, continuing what we're doing, I'm going to take this same overpass road. And we are going to go out... Hmm. We're probably going to put this back where it was, but there was a bit of a funky note there that was making things a bit strange, so... This part is totally open to interpretation. It's up to you. I leave the decision to you. I'm going to pick... I'm going to go six units out, and then cruise down maybe 12 units, down to ground. Or hey, maybe we'll go all the way to here. I really want this to be a very slight ramp, though. That's pretty good. I'll fix the height issue later. That's going to look a bit funky for now. And for this, four units away, maybe we'll do a, a five-unit curve to get this connected. So let's select the network. Freeform Road Tool is your friend when it comes to reconnecting these things. And this is a five-unit freeform curve. I'll fix any clipping issues later, or, uh, you know, there are ways to overcome these things. That looks pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna do this to the other side, or no, let, let's actually do the, uh, let's do this loop here. So this side is going to require a 6x6 six six that basically does the same thing. So I know we're starting from here, because it's gonna be identical to this side. So I'm gonna use this guideline, go all the way back to this road here. And a six unit curve is in order. Five, six by six, 45 degrees. You can measure it however you want. I find it's helpful sometimes to just draw your uh, starting point and your end point and then use freeform road tool and just make it happen. And get rid of the scaffolding roads. Not too bad, not too shabby. Or maybe an even more advanced way to do this, if you, if you feel so inclined, might be to take this road and we'll just go one unit over. We'll go one unit over, and we'll start here. This is up to you. You can do this however you want. <laughs> the ball's in your court. Six units up, six units over, and we're out from this. So with, with this type of design, you'll have to merge this back in. 
you know, somewhere over here. The three by three, I'm liking the five unit motif. So five units over, five units down. Now I've measured our landing point for this. Free farm road tool from your starting point to your end point. Boom. And then backwards. Nice. So that is your exit ramp. Your right turn exit ramp specifically. And freeform road tool and we're going in. Nice. This is going to be a bit mangled for a little while until we uh, <laughs> until we fix it. It's going to require a little probably node controller or something like that to adjust out. But I think we can do it. Or the other move is actually to elevate the whole thing. Let's see if this works. Elevate the whole thing. Do, 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 do. And we're going to slope this. I'm just going to redraw the whole thing. Same network. Straight slope. And down to there. It didn't solve it, but a little random tinkering never hurt. So we'll take node controller and we'll just kind of, yeah, sure. <laughs> I just clicked it and it virtually fixed it. There's there's some little little clipping there, but node controller is actually your best friend when it comes to this type of scenario. I can probably just make the ends straight and we're good. There we go. So I'm going to do the same exact thing to the other side. No, I'm not. I take it back. Let's, let's fix the clipping here. All you have to do to fi fix the clipping... Nothing, nothing too mysterious or crazy. You just have to nudge this in the right direction. So all you have to do is maybe I'll take this side and hold control and move it in just a little. And that does it. But even better, if I undo that, uh, control Z with move it is undo. I can take node controller on this one and probably get a great result as well. If you shift click the ends, it'll nudge them out just a little bit. Make ends straight. If we increase the size of the node, nope, it's all kinds of messed up. So let's let's do that. I do like that we I do like that we aligned. You know, shift clicking these helps to align the whole thing with the wider network. I respect that, but we are going to have to use uh, a tiny bit of move it. So we'll take move it and use control and just nudge that over just enough. Control is the finest movement you can do in move it. So just the the tiniest amount until the clipping stops. So that segment is, is fully adjusted. I'm going to do all the same stuff to the other side. And of course, fix this little guy. Just a little adjusting is all it takes. Make that angle a little more shallow. Let me build up the other side and uh, we'll do the ends and we'll see how it looks. That's pretty sharp, I think. Not too bad. I actually converted the center, the overpass road. North American Freeway has this uh, two plus two lane national road type piece so the walkability has been converted to zero but it is slightly thinner so it's going to make these transitions a little bit easier that may or may not change but it's okay i thought it looked nice i just want to show you the the dismount for this i want to show you how to trim the ends so i'm just going to take the end here and, and i'm just going to anarchy my way across the whole thing you can measure it out if you want but i think anarchy is probably the way to go and actually i didn't i did not need to <laughs> to do all that. It's okay. It's okay. I needed to cut there. But what I really need to do is figure out five units up. And we're going to make our end points here. There we go. I've been, I'm holding this motif where I'm doing five units away from my destination and then using freeform road tool. So let me show you what that might look like. Get rid of all the extra stuff. Freeform road tool, one lane road, freeform to a five by five. This is five units over, five units down, two units over, boom. And that is the dismount. So just trim all the ends once it's completed. You have to make sure to connect it to the highway, right? And face your roads the right way. I'll probably end up up in these to three lanes. But uh, give me a moment. I'm going to do the same thing to the other side, trim the ends, finish the connections, and we'll move it into place. And here it is, completed and decorated, as promised. You'll notice that all of the ends are completely free-flowing. So all of the highway connections have uh, lane math applied. All of the entrances and exits on the arterial side also have lane math applied. So these are completely conflict-free. There is a yield here that I've decided to add, but you could even overcome that with an asymmetrical road here if you want to. 
all of the, the lane mathematics are subject to change as you see fit, and it's very flexible in that way. But all of the magic is really happening here. You can see I've marked it up uh, painstakingly so. Actually, it's not that bad. I've, I've done worse. I've done more severe intersection marking situations. But what's important with this is adding the lane connectors to make sure that traffic will follow the markings. So you've got a conflict-free right turn off the highway here. That's coming off the highway this way, loops around, comes up. The blue line is the left turn from the arterial, and the green line is the crossing traffic. Right? And then in reverse over here, there's the, the tan line is the crossing traffic, the, uh, the red line is the left turn from this direction, and this kind of yellow color is, is free-flowing off of the highway. Because there are these crosses, there are these conflicts in the cross traffic and the left turning traffic, you do need to apply a light. You don't need to, you can do it without a light, it'll still work quite well. But for realism, if you don't want, if you want to <laughs> pretend it's a real thing, I would recommend doing this. Two cycles, uh, two cycles, one can be uh, left turns only, and the other can be uh, through traffic only. So right now the left traffic is stopped. You can see the hot dog van over here and the straight through traffic on both sides has the green and then that will be reversed in just a moment. The green will turn red and the red left turn will turn green allowing the traffic to turn left. Also, the light for here and here can always be green. Think about that. The traffic coming in off the highway has its own lane, so that the highway traffic will never be stopped by this interchange. The only traffic that has to stop is through traffic, just like this, which now gets to go, and left turn traffic, which has to wait for the through traffic. And I think that that is just fantastic. The rest of it flows completely with no, uh, with no real conflicts other than this, which you can overcome by adding a lane. Everyone, thank you so much for watching this one. This is, I think it's an underrated interchange. I'd like to see it in City Skylines a lot more. It takes up a bit more space than a park low, but it, it runs more traffic. I would even argue that it gives a diverging diamond a run for its money. I would say that the traffic flow is probably very similar to a, a diverging diamond, um, especially if you can get two lanes of through traffic through the middle. I didn't want to go up to four lane roads on the ends because this is not going to be that big of a city, but... Yeah, I believe it gives a diverging diamond a run for its money. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I stream twice a week on Twitch. Of course, subscribe here if you like tutorials and traffic management information and builds and city skylines and all that jazz. Uh, we also have a community Discord where we like to bounce ideas in our cities off of one another. Everyone, thank you for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.